Hi guys, Zach here, and welcome to another GameMaker Studio tutorial. Today I want to talk about optimizing your game to run faster with GameMaker Studio. So, I'm going to be referring back to my project, So Much Blood, that I released on Steam. Now, I know I've been coming back to this project a lot, but that's just because there's so many good things to learn from this project that I created. So, one of the things I had to look at when creating this game was optimizing it so it ran without any lag issues or anything like that. Now, of course, you can use the YoYo compiler uh, that YoYo Games has created, but it can be glitchy, you know? It's, it's not going to be perfect, and they don't have it perfect yet as well. You're definitely going to want to have it optimized so it runs on the normal Windows target, and then after that, you can uh, bring it to the YoYo compiler target. So when I released my game, I exported it and everything on the normal Windows uh, target because the YoYo compiler just had a few weird glitches that I couldn't put out there. All right, but I am working on it to put out the YoYo compiler soon in an update so that it'll run just even a hundred times faster. One thing I had to look at uh, when creating it, because we're having these randomly generated worlds, and if you have a, g a game with a huge room. Um, with randomly generated things, does, I mean, it doesn't even have to be that, but just a huge world. Um, there's a really simple script and a really easy way to go about doing this uh, that most of you may know, but some of you may not, and this is going to really be a lifesaver to you. Uh, now, there's a couple different methods. You can go with like a chunk loading sort of system, right? But that's that's pretty complex, especially for the beginner, uh, the, the beginner uh game maker enthusiast all right especially for the beginner programmer so what you can do is I've created a script in my game here which I call render so this script right here is using a game maker function called deactivate and activate objects. So the idea of it is to com uh, just completely deactivate the object. So if, if something is out of view, we want to hold it in memory, but we don't want it to be running through the step event, the draw event. We don't want it to be running through any of that. So that's what we're doing by deactivating these objects. So here I have all of my objects deactivated. So instance deactivate object O block so all of our blocks in the game so right off the bat this script is always deactivating everything and then instance underscore activate underscore region so now what this is doing is we set up a region at which we want to uh, activate the objects back up so here we're deactivating all the object except if it's in this region we're going to be activating it so for example, if we have this paint document, and let's say all these red scribbles are objects in your game, and this is your huge room in the game, basically all the red is deactivated, and with this region, if we say we want the region here, whoops, let me try that again. Let's say this is the region, then everything in here is now going to be activated and if we put this code in the step event if we move this region say over um, to the right it's going to constantly so this is going to be moved over here and the stuff that was once over here is going to be deactivated again so anything inside this region will be active and it will run through the code and display it like nothing is wrong. So this is cool. In theory, this is completely awesome. Uh, you won't have to worry about anything. You can basically have the room just filled with tons and tons and tons and tons of objects. And that's awesome. The only problem is that this costs a lot. Uh, I mean, it's the if you go into the debugger of GameMaker Studio, you know, this is going to take a toll on the CPU, especially the even more objects in the game, because it's got to keep track of everything that's going on here. 
So it's not like it's unlimited. So another method that we can go about to take down the cost of this instance activating and deactivating these objects is to go into wherever you're controlling the script, in this case it's the player, and in the step event I have camera and rendering right here, and here I run the script render. But what I'm doing is I'm only calling this render script every 10 steps, so 6 times a second, running on 60 FPS. In other words, it's not going to be 100% responsive, but by not having to re-render every single step, we're now doing instead of 60 times a second, we're now doing it 6 times a second, and there's no way you can really even tell. So I'm going to start up a new project here, and let's go ahead and see how it works. Alright, so here in the new project, what I went ahead and did was I created just a simple block object has nothing in the code, not solid, anything like that. So no properties, it's really just a standalone object. I then created a controller with just some keyboard movement so we can move around the X and Y view, and I drew the FPS as well onto the screen. In our room, our room is 8,000 in width, 8,000 in height, so a pretty massive room. And in our creation code, we're creating a block in every single point in this room. So let's go ahead and run the game and see what we get. All right, as you can see, we have our blocks here and I set the room to 60 FPS. So room speed is 60. And as you can see, we're only getting 23, 24 FPS. Now these are, that's, it's a lot of blocks, but keep in mind, we have nothing in the step event. We have nothing going on. It's just pretty much just objects. That's all it's doing. So, now let's go ahead and put in our render method and see if we get any new results. So I'm going to go into uh, our scripts and create a new script and I'm going to name it render. And the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to say instance underscore deactivate object o block. And then we're going to instance activate region. So here's the left. So I'm going to say view underscore x view zero. The top is view underscore y view zero. The width is going to be view underscore w view zero. And the height is going to be view underscore h view zero. And inside is true. So just by doing that, let's run the game and see what we get. Oh, of course, we need to go into the controller and actually put it into the sub event. So I'm going to say render. And now let's run the game. All right, as you can see, now that we have that script in our game, we now have 60 FPS, just like that. It runs so smooth, and this is the same amount of objects that we've created. So if we went into the debugger mode as well, I mean, look at all these objects. That's crazy. And we're running 60 FPS right now. Wow. So we can optimize it even more like I was saying. So if we go into our controller and in the create event, we create a variable called r equals zero. And in the step event, we say if r equals zero, then we're gonna render else, or actually we're gonna, we're gonna say if it equals 10, we're gonna set r to equals zero, and then we're gonna render it else r plus plus. That's all we need. And now we are rendering it 10 times less and it now runs the same way. So that's gonna be it for today. Go leave a like, go and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this helped you. And I, of course, see you guys next episode. Go to CodyMadeSimple.com to learn more. Peace.